Today's video, we're going to be checking out the Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising. This is Titan Redeemer. It's been 10 years since the Battle of the Breach and the oceans are still but restless. Vindicated by the victory at the Breach, the Jaeger program has evolved into the most powerful global defense force in human history. The PPDC now calls upon the best and the brightest to rise up and become the next generation of heroes. When the Kaiju threat returns, we will be ready. Built for brute force and armed with seismic morning star, Titan Redeemer is the walking wrecking ball of the new fleet. This action figure features approximately 16 points of articulation and includes accessories exclusive to the select format, sculpted by Big Shot Toy Works. So how tall is Titan Redeemer? Let's put the tape measure next to him, right to the very top of the head. There we go. Titan Redeemer stands at a very impressive seven inches in height. Switching that to centimeters, the figure is at 17.9 centimeters. For its accessories, sadly, it only comes with a fist. Just one, just one fist. That's all it comes with. Um, okay, I guess if you want to swap out the more clenching kind of extended hand for the human fist, you can do that. I say human fist. Go ahead and just pop that off, plug that back in place, and Titan Redeemer now has a closed fist. I don't personally get why we got that as the sole accessory. I, first, for starters, much more prefer the extended hand myself and by extended, I mean the extended fingers myself versus a closed fist. That's just my preference. But that's unfortunately the only thing that the figure comes included with. He could have come with some other things at the very least. Or one thing I would have loved to have seen him include or it include, because I think all the uh, Titans, that is the Jaegers, I think all the Jaegers are female. Or at least most of them are female. One thing I would have liked to see included though with the Redeemer is the alternate, a variation of the, of the arm here. The arm also, there's a version where these clasps open up, these front panels open up, and there's sort of like a fanning plastic or fanning metal. It's almost like a claw that comes out and then you've got the Morning Star inside. I would have liked a nice variation of that as well where you could have popped off the Morning Star and replaced out this arm component with the arm that would have had the, the moved out panels. Still though, it's not a bad looking figure. I, I do like it. Of course, the draw to, the, to this particular Jaeger, the Redeemer that is, is the giant Morning Star. Morning Star is pretty nicely sculpted, although the little plastic pieces on the side are just more bent and warped than I would have liked. Um, they're supposed to more, more so stick out straight and then ultimately just getting it out of packaging, it's just been a little on the warp side. But it's got some nice detailing there. You can see all the individual blades. This, of course, will spin. It only seems to spin in one area, even though it almost looks as if these are all sectional pieces. It is actually only this part that spins. And I guess to some extent, this part here spins as well. Coloring on the Redeemer is nice, almost kind of like the coloring of a forest green. Mixed amongst those greens though, you get this kind of slick draping of a dark, uh, like almost like a dark black, it seems. And that black carries its way across really the the most, if not all of the body of the Redeemer here. It's nice. Um, I feel as if there probably could have been a little bit more separations in color. I feel as if also as well, he would have had, or it would have had more paneling up at the top. I remember it seeming to have more panels up here rather than just one large panel. Either way though, up at the top corner, we've got zero, one, and I can't quite make out with that other lettering afterwards. Could be 0111E. 
Here I, I can very clearly say, see that it's PPDC. And on the other side there we've got the 11G and then 43. This part right up top, of course, its main viewing visor area is very bright in yellow. Not really much happening up the top though. Some variations in the yellow would have gone a long way. Maybe I would have darkened the area up at the top and lightened it up at the top here. Darken it at the bottom, lighten it up at the top there. But still not a bad looking head sculpt. It's unfortunately one of those Jaegers that is not as, as appealing to look at in plastic form. It looked good in the movies, but in the movies it also had all these little lights, little areas that lit up on it. Unfortunately here, it sort of just gets lost. And what we're ultimately facing here though, is not a threat of kaiju, but instead a threat of just otherwise bland sort of paintwork. It's not so much the sculpt that that disappoints the figure. Like, the figure does look really good, but I would have loved just some additional little lights on here. Like, even right around here, they've got only a few little lights, but there's not really a whole lot of other stuff that's breaking up the green and the gray. It's so much green, so much gray, that it gets just lost amongst itself almost. Spin the figure around. Got some nice detailing here happened up at the top torso area. Here I like because there's a little bit more gray happening. The green is more subtle and few panels are in the green while most of it here is gray. The front though, while it does have that gray, you just get so much green. I think my biggest, my biggest problem with it is it probably should have pulled back a little bit on this extra dark color. Maybe kept a little bit more of the green on its own without muddying it with all this extra dark color. It does feel like it's a smaller figure as well. I think when we look at the Obsidian Fury and the Guardian Bravo, you'll probably see that this may be the smallest of the three, and I think it is actually the smallest of the three. It has no peg holes either on the undersides of its feet. Rest assured, it seems to stand perfectly fine. Um, it's a little on the fidgety side, like the, the lower feet here. They move, but they don't move, move in a way where I feel like it's always remaining its flat footing. It feels like it almost sits up or angles a little bit. It's always sort of teetering on me. I guess it's the one shortcoming, and I'm not so much talking about its size, but the shortcoming of this figure is paint, but I think one of even greater is its articulation. Like, it does tout having 16 points of articulation, which I guess is true, but some of it is very limited. For example, like the head can rotate, but it only rotates this way. It doesn't seem as if there's much of a ball joint allowing the head to kind of tilt up and down. And even if you can get it in there, it's such a small head to try to move things around with. The upper torso does have a ball joint, but my biggest problem is the arms. The arms, and it's more to the design of Redeemer that's causing the problem. It's these panels that are on the front of the arms. So the arms do move back, but you can't move them any forward than that. To get to about there, consider yourself lucky, these panels just want to stay in the way. I don't know if I would have articulated these panels separately, just so that you could have actually moved the arms more forward than that right there. For something that is wielding such a powerful wrecking ball like the Morning Star, it would have been nice if you could have actually brought the arms a little bit more forward than what you can. Uh, still, the arms move back and they move out. You can get them, get them going to about there. It does have a hinge, or it has a hinge on its elbow, and you can rotate the, the hands. Um, you can't rotate here. However, you can rotate where the shoulder attaches to the torso area. Um, it doesn't have any articulation in the waist. You can move the legs forward and you can move the legs back. Not hindered anywhere to the extent that the shoulders are. It does have a bend at the knee. Unfortunately though, it's not so much this leg, this knee right here, but this knee, you can see that the paint either has been not applied because it could have just been, if you kept the legs straight, you wouldn't have seen it. When you bend the knee, I see all this either missing paint or paint that was there and have just chipped off in the process. And then as we get to the feet, uh, these are on a hinge, these are on a hinge, 
but no way do I feel like I'm getting a lot of movement out of the feet. And like I said, my biggest, my well, it seems like I have several problems with the figure, but one problem too is that the figure just doesn't seem, it stands, but you can't do too much with its posability. And its biggest problem as well, look at me just listing all these problems, it doesn't have pegs on the undersides of its feet. So often at times, I'm just gonna have to display the figure like this. I can't do anything more creative with the way I'm posing Titan Redeemer. Okay, okay, a little negative over the course of this review. Titan Redeemer, to be fair, is a neat looking Jaeger design, but I know by its design, there's limitations, of course, to what you can do with it when you put it to plastic form. Diamond Select did their best with the mold that they had to work with, or at the very least, the design that they had to work with, but its design does give you some limitations, especially when it comes to moving the arms on Redeemer. You can't move them any bit further forward than what we're doing here in Final Looks because of those flaps that are on either side of its shoulders. Now, it has it on the front and it has it on the back, but you're probably not likely to move the arms that further back. You're going to want to bring them forward, and those flaps, unfortunately, being that they're not posable, they stay in the way and they prevent you from doing anything further than what we're looking at right here. Paint is pretty good, but it does feel like it's a little on the muddy side. I would have pulled back a little bit of the black additional wash that they added to the, the green plastic because I find that that detracts away from the sculpt of the figure. And of course, we can't look at the fact that he didn't have a whole lot of accessories. I keep saying he. Didn't have a whole lot of accessories to work with. Really, an interchangeable hand is all we got. I would have liked to have maybe seen some something extra thrown in there, being, of course, that this is the select line after all. I looked at this figure first because I feel as if it's the weakest of the three. Of course, we're still going to look at Obsidian Fury and Guardian Bravo in the next couple of videos, but I wanted to look at this one first because looking at it in the package, I did feel it was going to have some shortcomings, and physically now looking at it in hand, I would agree it does have some shortcomings. It's definitely not one of the better ones, but it's still marginally pretty good. I'm still kind of on the fence. It's pretty good. Paint definitely could have been fixed though to help this figure on its way. Either way though, today we were having a look at the Dime Select Pacific Rim. This was the Jaeger Titan Redeemer. And like I said, we're gonna have a look at the Obsidian Fury and the Guardian Bravo in the upcoming videos. So if you guys liked Pacific Rim Uprising, you hopefully will stay tuned and watch the videos on those two Jaggers as well. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below as well, guys. Because after all, if you don't hit the little subscribe button down below, you'll never know when new videos are coming onto this channel. And I know that's not 100% guarantee. You can also hit that bell notification, which is not 100% guarantee. You can also, best way to remedy the problem of missing out on videos is you can check out my homepage. I've heard from a couple of you guys already in the comments section that Videos going up sometimes on this channel aren't getting viewed right away. So the best way to fix that is whenever you're finished watching the video that you're currently watching right now, say, for example, Titan Redeemer, make sure you swing over to the homepage, check out the video section, and see if there's any videos there that you might have missed as well. 100% guarantee, it's certainly the best we can do. Even though YouTube is always trying to fix itself, it seems to make things worse and worse. Oh well, either way, more videos, guys, will be coming your way. Like I said, we're going to have a look at the other two Jaegers. Those are going to be coming up and lots more other videos as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.